Well, joining me now from Edinburgh for his comment and analysis is ING analyst Jason Kenny. Jason, thank you for this. Um, some would say that uh, Tony Hayward's departure looks a little bit premature. There was the thought that he would stay until everything was cleared up. What does this tell us? What does the timing tell us? Um, I mean, essentially, Tony Hayward had positioned himself as the lightning rod for all of the issues surrounding this unfortunate accident and the subsequent spill. Mm. Uh, I think he was right to be proactive uh, and to lead from the front and to tackle the issues head on. But unfortunately, he did falter under the onslaught of media and political pressure and the massive swell of anger, of course. Uh, and it's maybe opportune at this time when we have some operational control of the well uh, to begin thinking about changing him out. And, you know, whilst it's unfortunate that he's got to go, uh, he's got undoubted capabilities to serve the company very well over 28 years. Um, you know, we do need a political fall guy, and this kind of symbolic bloodletting, I think, will be positive for the stock. It will give U.S. investors the opportunity to once again consider BP in their portfolios. Now, let's uh, move on to look a little bit about Robert Dudley. Um, how important for the Americans is it that he's American? Uh, I think it's um, important in that uh, for, for Americans, for the Americans, it's, it's very difficult to say. Cause, I mean, ultimately, we've got a lot of core shareholders that are not American, mm. and only 40% of this company is American or London. But there is a significant political gain by having an American in charge of those assets, where there is a lot of value to be looked after on behalf of BP and BP shareholders globally. Uh, and on, on that basis, it is important. Now, the other side of the coin, of course, is that uh, he, he left Russia with a, a rather ignominious track record there. What about Russia? I mean, one in four uh, barrels of oil comes from Russia. How would they take to him being CEO? I think ultimately it's for the rest of the board to still retain the, the confidence of uh, Russian support uh, on the, the, the global business. And I think... Um, Bob Dudley will be focusing on the American asset base and predominantly the American shareholders. But I, I doubt that you'll see Bob Dudley going across to talk with Putin about the Russian assets. There's no reason for the <laughs> TNKBP stake can to be at risk. <laughs> There's no reason for the TNKBP stake to be at risk, though. I mean, it's all operations. Uh, go ahead uh, across there and, mm. and, and very good they are as well. Mm. Now just going back to the uh, the leak in the Gulf it looks like uh, hopefully they are much closer to having a final solution if you like for that. Are we any closer to putting a figure on the cleanup costs? Uh, well we'll find out tomorrow the initial provisions that will be in the Q2 results. Uh, I mean we're looking at 25 billion dollars for those provisions. Uh, of course they can only clarify what they know about at this time. Mm. Uh, the 20 billion is something that's been agreed with Obama, as we know about, maybe 8 billion of, of costs thereafter. But, uh, you know, we have to see tomorrow, really. So if BP's lost uh, about 50 billion pounds worth of market value, then it's lost rather more than the cleanup costs are going to be. Well, yes, and we saw last year, uh, last week, sorry, a deal with Apache, mm. uh, where 2% of the reserves base uh, was sold at 6.5% of the company's market capitalization, which kind of shows you that self-liquidation for BP would be massive shareholder value release, as they were to sell off uh, more peripheral assets at that kind of uh, mm. um, dollar price. Uh, we could double the market cap of BP quite easily. Um, there is a lot of inherent net asset value within the company and some very good promising core assets that are veritably undervalued by the market today. Okay, Jason Kenny, thank you very much indeed.